make it live uh, somebody will uh, introduce me or yes 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 just okay. a minute sir we we are live now okay okay very good afternoon everyone we are another, back again with another webinar and uh, the series of uh, informative webinars we are uh, here with dr prateek kalia dr prateek kalia is a post doctoral research specialist at the department of corporate economy faculty of economics and administration marsalia university czech republic he is a specialist in the field of management with a keen interest of electronic commerce e service quality and consumer behavior he secured top academic ranks during graduation bachelor of science and post graduation mba additionally he is ugc net Uh, qualified dr kalia uh, dr kalia completed his phd in management with a specialization in digital retail online consumer behavior from the department of research innovation and consultancy ik gujral punjab technical university india today he is going to talk about uh, artificial intelligence and uh, electronic commerce dr kalia uh, kalia welcome to the forum uh, thank you uh, from the fraternity of lbf we welcome you and we are really eager to listen you what you are going to speak about so uh, please please start your session uh thank you professor uh, first of all i would like to congratulate uh, lbef for organizing um this webinar in collaboration with asia pacific university of technology and education and i get to know that uh, lbf lbef is the first it college uh, of nepal and i can't doubt that because i can see the faculty members reaching out uh, to international speakers and professor uh, for the benefit of the students and uh, for this effort i would like to congratulate uh, professor sandeep kotish for reaching me out and uh, giving me this opportunity so today in this webinar i will be sharing about artificial intelligence in e-commerce uh, i hope my screen is visible Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, and the floating window, I think it is not interfering with the view. No, no, no. It's fine. Okay. It is fine. Please go ahead. Okay. So before I start my presentation, this webinar, I would like to set the expectations for the audience, and I will be giving a brief introduction about artificial intelligence, and I will be sharing how artificial intelligence is. rocking e-commerce business uh, the content of this presentation are based on my book chapter which is forthcoming uh, it is by crc press it is available online and if uh, you like the presentation you can always write to me to the organizer for the complete book chapter i will be happy to share before i start i would like to share a scenario of e-commerce industry i have taken example of amazon.com which is a very popular e-retailers as you can see from 2017 to 2020 the sales is continuously growing despite of pandemic i have read the report that despite of all the situation uh, people are still buying maybe they are not buying electronics but they are buying grocery disinfectants or a respirator so they are buying daily stuff from these uh, e-retailers from mm -hmm. i have taken example of amazon.com that means that e-commerce industry is here to stay it is growing and lot of transactions are happening every day so lot of business transactions mean lot of data and with the help of data science we can convert this information into uh, useful uh, information into decision making so since i talk about data science now i will explain what is data science briefly describe so data science is the extraction of knowledge and data by using different techniques and algorithms it has different subsets first is artificial intelligence uh, which is, which i will talk in detail in my subsequent slides but it is how machines mimic human behavior it has a further subset called machine learning um just like humans when you practice something 
uh, you gain with experience. You learn through your experience. Similarly, uh, with repetition, machine learn to improve with experience. And there is a further subset to machine learning that is deep learning. And deep learning is just like how we teach a baby. So we teach computer uh, uh, regarding various things. And it, it is like computation of multi-layer neural network. And it makes things feasible for us. Now, I talked about data science, but we should first understand what is data. So here I have given hierarchy of data science, hierarchy of needs. For example, when you start writing a journal article or a report, you have to get some data. This data can be primary data, can be secondary data, external data, or it can be user content, it can be numbers, quantitative data, or it can be qualitative data. For example, you extract tweets from Twitter. And once you collect the data, you tend to move or store the data. And for example, you store your data in an Excel sheet or this data can be structured or unstructured. And uh, you can also store, for example, you are uh, saving Twitters, uh, Twitter tweets. So you can save it as a text file. Now, when you have stored the data, you explore it, transform it, and you clean it. For example, you check for the normality, you check for the missing values, and you clean the data and make the data ready for analysis. And once the data is ready, you put that data into analysis, it goes to next step, uh, which is testing, aggregation, and labeling. For example, you run regression analysis on your data, and uh, you tend to see what, what are the results, and you, tend, you try to find out the model fit. And here, uh, the mach through machine learning, machine will try to find an uh, optimum model fit for you. And the next step is, um, artificial intelligence and deep learning that is learning and optimizing. And this whole process is very, very autonomous without any human intervention. So this is the hierarchy of data science. Now I will specifically talk about artificial intelligence. And before I talk about artificial intelligence, we should understand what is intelligence in terms of human intelligence. So it is the ability of a person to learn, understand, and deal with the new situation, think abstractly, and use knowledge to manipulate one's environment. And we have another very elaborate definition, which is using different adjectives, that ability to acquire, apply memory, knowledge, experience, understanding. It's a, it's a very elaborate uh, definition. Uh, scientists believe that artificial intelligence can be compared to human intelligence in, in, on two levels. One, where artificial intelligence is equivalent to human intelligence. Another, where artificial intelligence is exceeding human intelligence. So first, let us talk about artificial intelligence equal to human intelligence. So we have different definition about uh, uh, artificial intelligence mimicking human intelligence. That is a machine which can partially or completely replace humans exhibit human intelligence, uh, mimic intelligent human behavior, or it is the non-biological intelligence, or the science and engineering of making intelligent machines. Uh, with human intelligence, I would like to mention that there is a problem of bounded rationality. Um, and when we make decisions, these decisions are suboptimal because of certain limitations. So first limitation is cognitive limitation. For example, if I have to remember all the telephone numbers, all the emails, it is not possible for me. Maybe I can remember 10, 20, 30, or maybe 50 uh, email address and telephone number. But after, after a while, I will start saving them on my phone, uh, on my phone book, rather than you know, remembering them, memorizing them, that is very difficult for me. So this is human limitation. Second is information imperfection. Say I memorize 100 phone numbers, and then I have to dial a phone number of my friend, one of my friend, and I have to accurately dial all the 10 digits uh, uh, to call that uh, friend of mine. I may dial one incorrect digit, and I may get connected to somebody else. So there may be information imperfection when I 
try to recall or retrieve the information uh, from my memory. Third constraint is time constraint. Um, whatever you have to do, you have to make a decision in a limited time. For example, students, they appear for the examination, they have three hours and they have to write their exam within that, I mean, that particular time. So within that time, you have to make a decision. As a result, we make suboptimal decisions. But in case of artificial intelligence exceeding human intelligence, it is not the case because machines can act intelligently and they can perform various processes like memorizing, learning, reasoning, perception, problem solving. There is no limit to a uh, number of email I, I addresses you can save to your computer. Uh, each time you want to write an email, you can simply type in the name and a pop-up menu or, or a drop-down will appear and you can simply punch in that email address and it's very convenient. And second is rationality. So uh, computers are achieving the right thing under uncertainty. So throughout uh, the industrial revolution, uh, from mechanization to mass production to automation of, uh, and electronics and computers, and currently now internet of things and networks, uh, we can see uh, the evolution of intelligence in computers. Uh, just being mechanical device to analytical, just from being a calculator uh, now to being more empathetic. So machines are becoming more emotional. They have emotional quotient, just, not just IQ, they are having EQ. And you never know, maybe after some time, machines may have uh, self-awareness and spiritual quotient as well. They know what they are doing. They will know that. And I, I was going through a video in which professors and scientists, they are working on a robotic arm, uh, which is not a fiction. You can check the video on YouTube. Uh, and that a robotic arm has self-awareness. And uh, if that arm has to pick a ball from the table, um, that arm will understand that after, after continuous repetitions, that arm will know that where it is and where is the ball. And uh, this, you know, improves with experience and uh, it's all about self-awareness in machines. And now when we have artificial intelligence, which is exceeding human intelligence, uh, there is no limit. So I, AI has acquired advanced capabilities like reasoning, planning, conceptualization, learning, creativity, common sense, cross-domain, and even self-awareness that I have already talked about. And now when we know about um, artificial intelligence exceeding human intelligence, uh, let us see how artificial intelligence is rocking e-commerce business. So I have divided uh, the e-commerce business processes into three main processes, marketing, order processing, servicing, and they are having further sub processes that I will be discussing in my subsequent slides. So first one is market research. Uh, typically, we talk about segment STP, segment target and position. So for segmentation, with the help of artificial uh, intelligence, we can identify accurate segments and customer groups which are profitable. And for targeting, we know that we have we can position right kind of product uh, for right kind of price, right at right place with right kind of promotional strategy and distribution strategy. Traditionally, we have techniques like cluster analysis, tied artificial neural networks, um, regression trees, genetic algorithms. But with the help of AI powered um, ANN system, I will be taking example of IBM Watson, uh, the massive unstructured data, which can be written or non-written, non-written, say a picture or a video or, or the content which is being generated by a user, for example, tweets, uh, can be used for segmentation and uh, which can be processed through unsupervised neural networks. And they can identify the themes, patterns, user posts, and user experience to generate strategies uh, which is very helpful for gathering, sorting, analyzing market knowledge and give you competitive intelligence. And you can position your product as per the external market forces and you can uh, woo the stakeholders. You know, you can influence them, you can attract them and you 
make products as products and services as per customer preferences and behavior. Um, I'm, I have given an illustration. I talked about IBM Watson system. So uh, here is an example where a customer has met an accident and he's writing to an insurance company. And he says that I was turning left to the green light and a car ran uh, a red light and hit me. I will not read the whole paragraph. So it's just an example how uh, computer systems will be able to derive concepts because customer is talking about automobile driving and uh, he met an accident. Then there are keywords that he was driving a car, somebody ran green light, hit him. There was a whiplash and he's filing for insurance. And the categories are automobile, obviously automobile uh, insurance, and there is financial loss to the customer. So he needs some compensation. He's not uh, happy about this incident. So sentiment is negative and emotion is sad. So before the claim manager uh, reads to whole application, because he may be receiving uh, 10,000 or maybe you know millions of um, um, applications. So he will be able to understand that which category of this claim is about. And it, it, that, that particular claim goes to a specific manager uh, uh, for the settlement. So this is how AI works. Uh, next is market stimulation, which is concurrent to uh, marketing. That is any set of um, activities and institution and processes for creating, communicating, delivering, exchanging, offering to the stakeholders, uh, customer, clients, partners, uh, society at large. And we know that these uh, uh, activities are very routine, time consuming and repeatable. You have a lot of data, so you can gather, sort, analyze, process the data uh, to get a strategic advantage. And, and now we have a marketing ecosystem where, you know, Artificial intelligence can offer a lot of help to us. I have given example of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, how it is helping in, uh, in the four P's of marketing. So in all these four P's, you will see that personalization is the key word. For example, in product, there is hyper-personalization. Um, say we want to buy, I want to buy a t-shirt. I would like to buy a t-shirt that fits me. Similarly, uh, for, there will be a lot of product customization. Uh, typically when we buy electronics, for example, uh, we have a, a typical specification where products are available with a certain fixed specification, but there are a lot of companies which are coming up with uh, personalization, for example, Dell computers. Um, you can make your design your own computer with your own specification as per your preferences. So uh, AI is going to help you out on how to choose your uh, no, product and how you personalize it. Uh, next is new product development or artificial recommendation system. Similarly, in terms of place, even e-commerce as such is very, uh, exact, I mean, it's a very, very a uh, universal phenomena in which uh, everybody can reach out to different products uh, from the computer. So it's very convenient. There is speed and on the sales process is very simple and there is 24 seven support available through computer. Uh, for price management, uh, dynamic, pricing man dynamic pricing is very, very interesting concept where customer uh, may get uh, uh, customized pricing as per the market situation and the going rate. And next is promotion, where again, we get very personalized um, uh, communication through, uh, through new technologies. For example, you received an email, uh, whenever you receive an email from, uh, uh, say from an e-retailer, uh, they will write, dear Mr. So-and-so, instead of writing dear customer, they will write your name. So uh, the companies are now trying to personalize their communication. This will create a unique experience and um, a wow factor and obviously it will reduce disappointment. So these are the five key areas. So while I am sharing my presentation, um, I'm giving a lot of hints, a lot of uh, areas for the students, for the researchers, for the faculty member uh, to see and explore um, uh, if they take up some article or they want to write some project. So these are the area, upcoming areas in artificial intelligence and e-commerce on which they can work. 
academically also i'm 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 uh, sharing because academically uh, you you would love to write on these upcoming areas so image recognition text recognition and decision making um is getting a little bit obsolete but uh, major companies like google amazon microsoft apple they are working on uh, new areas like voice recognition and autonomous robots and vehicle system now the third uh, uh, point under order processing that is term negotiation say if we go to a shop to buy some product and we get in a dialogue with that shopkeeper and there are series of arguments you know there is a proponent there is an opponent and there are counter arguments and we want to get the best deal uh, but in case of online shopping and e-commerce we do not have anybody you know with whom we can have that dialogue uh, because this is a one way process and you are interacting with a website so who is going to negotiate with you chatbots and virtual assistants so they are going to negotiate and they are 24/7 available and they can negotiate as per the market condition and they can offer dynamic pricing you know which is based on the market condition on real time basis another very interesting concept is uh, fashion ai technology that i'll be sharing that it is related to order selection and priority uh, i live in a country where people don't speak english so if I, if i go to a mall and there are different uh, products on display and they have put some specification the name of the product uh, otherwise i can identify the product if it is very very uh, common i can identify it but if there is some specific name to that product what will happen either i will take off my mobile and try to you know um, uh, translate uh the text with the help of google translate which is again a ai power technology um but i have given example of alibaba uh, they have launched very interesting technology fashion ai technology to boost their sales so a customer can simply click the picture and upload the uh, the picture of that product and the e-commerce website will automatically search uh for a similar kind of item so other um, benefits are like uh, on the real time basis that data can be tracked and for example you are going to competitor website very often and this is quite uh, 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 natural for a person for a customer to be savvy to look for a product uh, for for a discount you know for uh, we are very price savvy we always try to save money so if i am looking for a laptop and uh, it is priced uh, at 21000 rupees and i go to another website if uh, so now companies are becoming smart to track customer activities uh, say through cookies so they will try to keep a price discount if you move from one website say amazon to ebay uh, ebay will try to capture the customer by offering say 500 rupees less uh, for, for a discount and they can also give product recommendation to uh, you know uh, catch attention of the customer to prey upon their competitors uh, customer uh, fifth is order receipt so ai can evaluate prospects based on their propensity to buy so uh, i i take a similar scenario like you go to a shop and you have certain objection you talk to the shopkeeper and that person will try to uh, overcome your uh, objection but in case of a website Uh, emotion ai will automate the process and try to speed up the checkout process a very common example is amazon echo you can simply talk to that device and you if you want to order something you can talk to and you can order something through that device and and um, all these processes are very personalized and they are available on a variety of devices you can access it through your mobile phone through your tablet and through your laptop so you are good to go and and it's like ready on the go you can buy anything while you're traveling or you're sitting at your home or maybe in your office now the next step is order billing and payment management in case of invoicing as i have mentioned in the beginning that in e-commerce business uh, daily there are millions of transactions and there are huge number of customers that means huge number of data and for that and data we need technology to for for data extraction for invoice generation it is not possible for us to uh, generate invoice manually so to handle such huge amount of data and avoid any kind of anomalies we need 
uh, smart systems, uh, which is possible through artificial intelligence. And then is payment optimization. When we are buying things online, we get a variety of options through which we can make payment. We can make payment through ballots, through credit card, debit card, online banking, various options. And you never know, maybe uh, cryptocurrency become very, Bitcoins, they become very popular. You can make payment uh, to uh, new, new, new type of currency. And one of my favorite topic is fraud detection. So I have taken an example of Frogster. Uh, which uses historical data related to transaction, billing, shipping, uh, and the IP connection. For example, if there is a fraudster uh, who wants to make some uh, fraud online, so this technology will stop the fraud from the beginning. No, things will not happen. Uh, it, it is like stopping the things before they happen, Something before something goes wrong and you do the recovery, service recovery you stop, nip the problem in the root. So this is very interesting research area also. And once you have the order, you have, uh, you have generated the invoice, next step is order scheduling and fulfillment and delivery. And first step is pickup and uh, delivery, that you have to pick up the product and you have to deliver the product at right place, right time, right quality, right quantity. And, and the um, demand patterns are very, very irregular. The, uh, sometimes you have seasons, festivals, when there is a sudden hike in demand and there are certain period where there is very less demand and there is very limited time for order processing and there are very short delivery schedules because people are very impatient. So one a customer, as a customer, if I make order online, uh, I, I wish that my product is delivered as soon as possible. So uh, for that, uh, robotics and space age fulfillment technology, uh, for example, drone delivery uh, is getting very popular. Uh, I will be sharing a visualization in my next slide. And then we need to have very important uh, uh, concept is sustainable uh, supply and reverse logistics we need to have. And products are generally returned without their original packing. I, I take an uh, example, uh, when a product is delivered to you, uh, the product is well packed. It has all the information, all the barcodes with machine can uh, scan and they understand that what is within, uh, inside that particular box. But when you return the product, you take off all the packing and all the barcodes and information and you just you know, hand it over to the, um, uh, the person who is there for uh, reverse logistics. And when that person gives that product to the company, so there is a problem that how machine can identify that product and restock in the warehouse. For, for, that, in, for that case, product similarity and automatic image recognition system, uh, they are very, very useful. Uh, and the last step is, okay, so this is the illustration uh, visualization I was talking about that this is how you are going to get your delivery in near future, you know, maybe, uh, a drone will you know, come near your house, over around your house and deliver your uh, box. And I was also reading about predictive delivery uh, technology by Amazon on which Amazon is working. And the technology is about, about uh, knowing what customer is going to purchase. For example, I want to buy a phone. Uh, if I'm going frequently to that website, so Amazon will, for example, I'm taking just an illustration that Amazon will try to stock that particular product uh, in the warehouse, which is very near to my place. So as soon as I make an order, I get the delivery. Uh, so it is creating a wow effect, uh, uh, creating a wonderful customer experience. And the last um, step in e-commerce process is customer service and support. And service AI is very useful technology uh, for uh, in this case. So first is profiling of the customer to identify current and potential customer. So we can do psychographic segmentation, their lifestyle related, their use related. Um, uh, psychographic was introduced by a US based uh, uh, by MIT. And then demographic, uh, a Belgian statistician uh, introduced demographic Aschengler that on the basis of age, sex, uh, you know, marital status, you can uh, do the segmentations. And it was it became very popular uh, uh, in the book Bills of Mortality, 
know where, where municipality is taking care of how many people are there in the city how many people are born how many kids are born how many people are dead and then another concept came called web graphics by Grossnickel and Rask in 2011 they said that now customers are moving to a web environment so we should know that how they are making purchase you know what is their internet experience what is their proficiency through which device they are uh, and they are buying things online and i have also introduced a new concept i hopefully by the end of this year i will be able to publish it in the form of a book or a chapter which is uh, cellular graphics it is like next level to uh, the segmentation and so once you profile the customer you can maintain uh, the relationship and you can prospect a potential customers next step is personalizing there is no limitation in which computers can speak to you they can speak multiple multiple languages they can customer uh, they can identify customer emotional states um, um, a few of a few of the faculty members and uh, you know, students they must have uh, uh, heard about sentiment analysis that we very frequently uh, you, you will be seeing a lot of publication based on sentiment analysis uh, it, it is just identifying the customer emotional state and then accordingly strategizing and then you can retrieve the information and you can use that information for customer feedback and then you can devise a service recovery strategy uh, last step is i mean uh, last benefit is uh, the system is very efficient very reliable high quality and consistent and since this is autonomous there are no human errors and due to fatigue and bonded relationality so that's all for my presentation in the end i would like to share this quote by stephen hawking that the rise of powerful artificial intelligence will be either the best or the worst thing ever to happen to humanity there are a lot of movies you must have seen matrix in which machines are taking control of humans and you know and you know know the movie so you never know how much autonomy you should give to the machine so they are useful to the human uh if you like my presentation you can always search me on the different academic profiles on scopus or create problems research gate academy i'm sure you will not be able to remember these uh, urls so you can simply google my name prateek kalia for, followed by my uh, research domain and uh, you can uh, you know reach me out uh, directly or through the organizers i'll be happy to uh, share about this um, particular presentation or if you want to read more about this uh, uh, particular presentation you can go through the complete chapter i will be happy to thank you thank you for the presentation sir uh, we are having a question from a participant like sir is ai more likely to reduce the number of jobs in coming future yeah obviously yes because you know when when one machine can doing can do a lot of stuff you know certainly it will affect uh, the job opportunities but it will also create a lot of job opportunities because for example i am talking about artificial intelligence but somebody has to design the system so it will also create a lot of jobs it is just like com just like computers so earlier we were like apprehensive for computers that computers will reduce number of jobs but you can see that it has only increased number of jobs right thank you any other participant have some questions the chat window and question answer window is open yeah are you able to access uh, the chat window dr pratik yes i am able to yeah yes please so i have just one question that i have answered which was regarding number of jobs in coming future oh, uh, there's a, another question what is the current scenario of ai related products in nepal uh, you might not be aware of the scenario of nepal but uh, if you can uh, have some knowledge then please discuss otherwise a global scenario also can be discussed see um, specifically uh, this e-commerce is my domain here so yes. i'll talk about e commerce only because uh, if i talk about artificial intelligence in you know medical science it will be on you know <laughs> different tangent 
so right. i will just talk about uh, artificial intelligence and e-commerce so I, AI, have... yes i think ai already has entered in the life of uh, common place right and and uh, if you go in the e-commerce industry medical science covid 19 have taught us that uh, vaccine development and uh, diagnosis you know every, everything ai is required so if you talk about the nepal scenario yes of course the thing the future is very bright some challenges also being existing uh, people have to tackle it and and future is very bright is yeah it? obvious yeah it is quite obvious so for example uh, how ai can enter your life for example what i i will just ask that what kind of devices you use we use a computer we use a you know we use mobile phone everybody is using a mobile phone uh, and and we use a number of services for example google maps we use uh, google translate um, so so it is again ai artificial intelligence so how, how uh, for example if i go to uh, buy some grocery what i do because all the labels are written in a different language so i just put the camera on the ingredients and it tra translate everything for me and i can simply select in what language i want from this language to this language for example i live in czech republic so i i put a package of czech language and i uh, ask the application to translate it in english so whatever i scan or take a picture it can translate this is again it is artificial intelligence they can recognize the words you know it, it is like image processing which i have already shared in my uh, previous slides it is like image processing for example you you use a google maps so it has already my dear friend it has already entered you like yes another Anybody? question we have yeah wouldn't be uh, difficult for nepalese people to adopt ai based e-commerce <laughs> okay 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 uh we have some disturbance i think uh some part participant has no, switched on the microphone uh, okay just a minute let me check yeah, yeah. yes b sir can you mute yourself yes b sir sir yes sir please mute yourself right sir hello hello Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Please mute yourself. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. So, how you, your question was how people in Nepal can use uh, get used to artificial in, uh, intelligence? Yeah, but how it's they will, difficult. Yeah. It 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 is about technology adoption. Okay. Technology diffusion and technology adoption. Uh, I would I would like to put it in a way that, for example, we use Instagram, we use Facebook, we are using. mobile phone we uh, people are making videos on tiktok and they are using advanced technologies for morphing their face and even illiterate people are making videos no they know nothing they have read yeah. nothing True. they know nothing about technology but they are a big user of technology so in the same way we will not know that okay we are using this technology but indirectly we are using that technology passively yes yes Yes. It's a very interactive interface-based uh, technology have come up where a uh, navy person, even a non-technical person, can also utilize. Yes. So I don't see any problem in using uh, AI e-commerce for Nepalese or any kind of person who is illiterate or not illiterate. Okay, another question we have. Uh, though we uh, you have covered these points, but can you briefly list out what are the advantages of using ML and AI in e-commerce industry? it 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 is very simple because e-commerce industry as i said it is growing you know huge number of data so when we talk about big data we talk about big data every day i uh, i was just going through a facebook post uh, and it, it it said that every day every person is browsing a social media content equivalent to eiffel tower every day <laughs> we are generating Uh, you know a lot of data in gigabytes so what will happen to that data ultimately who will analyze it can you analyze it manually not possible so you have to use certain systems and these systems have to be as smart as humans they have to think like humans and there you can train 
the machines no? you can design a system and then you can tell the machine and they will you know they will improve after repetitions with practice so they will become more 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 accurate right thanks yes okay uh, as a counterpart what disadvantages are there because we are using extensively about the ml and ai people are becoming uh, kind of uh, mechanical right uh, companies are also using data in a very yes uh, yes very intelligent manner right yeah yeah so, yeah, so yeah. what are the disadvantages i think the very obvious disadvantages we can see like privacy problems like yes. security issues are there yeah then uh, yeah what other issues uh, i think you are the researcher of this field what yeah. other issues are there uh, although i didn't wanted to disclose but i'm working on a very very interesting area uh, it is called as digital amnesia digital forgetfulness we are so dependent on machines if i ask the participant what is their mobile number they will not be able to some of the participants may not be able to recall or if i ask them what is your father's mobile number what is your you know friend's mobile number so they are totally dependent on machine we forget about everything you you may not forget uh, remember all the passwords what do you do you simply save it in your browser and you click yes, yes. and just just try to log in you cannot remember all the bank password all the uh, yes, you know, yes 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 You know, and that is why know. digital wallets have come into picture. Digital exactly. wallets, you can, exactly. you can uh, have your PIN card, your uh, voter exactly. ID card, every everything you can store online. Yes. And wherever required, you can access. But uh, whenever you are accessing on some cloud database, so it has some uh, kind of issue. Recently, I got to know that Yatra. dot com lost their uh, more than one million data. So on Yatra. dot com, people are uh, putting their uh, Uh, sometimes credit card name full name father's name uh, passport number everything is been given over there so if exactly. such kind of data is been lost in coming time then we will be in a big trouble yeah that definitely so that's why new technologies like blockchain technology is coming so that you can trace from where data is originating you know where money is originating and from from where to where it is going you know you can trace and uh, trace it so with new technologies with new problems comes new technologies since you talked about privacy and security i did not mention it so i have shared a new concept that is digital forget forgetfulness we all already know about digital addiction you know especially in youngsters and it yeah. is not just affecting us uh, online but it, it is affecting us personally also right. you know on on, on uh, medically also it is affecting us you know our eyesight our memory our confidence and one more thing i am also working on cyber psychology for example a person may be very introvert personally but when that person comes online he can write very bold statement on twitter <laughs> yeah trollers you know? yeah so cyber psychology it is changing your psychology a person who is very meek in in you know personal uh, interaction he becomes very very strong and bold when he is on twitter or facebook he writes you know Uh, too many things and you know, too much philosophy and too much you know strong things so how that that person is able to get that strength because he feels that he feels secure behind the internet secure yeah right, right. And, and he knows that i can write something about this you know uh, this problem maybe a scenario or political situation or covid anything yeah, that is true that is true i i also read somewhere that one of the troll uh, when it was investigated so he was a very sophisticated guy very educated one and by looking nobody can see that he can write some abusing languages and some kind of uh, bullish statements but uh, he was doing uh, with a different name with a different picture profile picture when when we investigated then uh, the person was very sophisticated yeah 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 it, it, it's just like joe harry window you know the hidden self <laughs> your hidden self comes out <laughs> yeah all right hidden personality yes. yes another question we have dr pradeek uh, how can ai help in content marketing content marketing i will not uh, uh, digital marketing i do write on digital marketing but uh, um i may not be the right person to comment on it but yes as a whole uh, because we know about crawlers and different technologies you know which can read and for, for example we use turnitin to find the plagiarism 
and we used paraphrasing tools like quillbot and you know different right, you know right. online so they can right. check the uh, sentence structure we use grammarly to check the english so this is how you can you know, we are already using a lot of applications uh, which are powered right. by artificial intelligence which are helping in content marketing right right thank you yes. so you have a publication recently i was looking at your profile and i got to know recently you have published a paper with computers in human behavior Yes. One of the top venue. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations for the same. Can you brief you. what was the working, what was the research problem, and how did you tackle? Okay, okay. So uh, that paper is like we. Uh, I really worked hard on that paper and took some time, but uh, I am happy it is published because it was something new. Because traditionally people, as I can see that generally people are working on say certain uh, SAM based models and you know. Yeah. make a model you check the validity discriminant validity and then you see the model of it and you present okay who is affecting what so i i have done a different kind of uh, analysis in which uh, i was just trying to see that uh, how different retailers uh, which are giving their services in india uh, are perceived by the customer on the basis of service quality in a different way uh, so i try to make a perceptual map so i created a perceptual map which is based on uh, discriminant analysis uh, it's not uh, not very popular uh, to do it man manually but i did it manually so i created perceptual uh, uh, maps based on the discrimin uh, based on the results of discriminant analysis so it gives a very very neat visualize the uh, visualization for example uh, there are different parameters of service quality reliability assurance and so we can know that which retailer is big on that particular service quality dimension and which other retailer is also performing similarly and how consumer perceive that uh, and sometimes consumer perceive uh, two kind uh, two retailers as similar kind sometimes they believe that these retailers are are different kinds so different uh, uh, i mean different positionings can happen for example if two retailers are perceived similar so they can capture each other's uh, customer because there is very less gap so you can uh, say they can simply capture the other so there are a lot of marketing and practical implication of this paper and uh, yeah i'm happy i'm glad that it is very useful and uh, people are citing it yeah that good that good thank uh, you thank you very much for the uh, explanation any other question we have uh, okay i think uh, there are no more question and uh, on the behalf of lbf fraternity faculty and management uh, we would like to uh, give you a big thanks that you accepted the invitation last time we could not take place because of some uh, i told you the issues were there yeah. but uh, this week we could not we could make it and thank you very much once again thank you thank you so much we are, we are, i'm we, glad we are looking forward for few uh, more webinars in coming time uh, whatever research topics you are working on so you get uh, another paper published and we will invite you once again for discussion definitely and i also invite all the faculty members in your institute and students if they are writing on something and they wish to write on something i'm open for any kind of collaboration if you they have already done some work and they are looking for mentorship um, yeah, i look actually uh, dr pratik we are having the msc itm program right and msc itm program is basically related to uh, management of it the topic which you are working with like e retailing right. and e crm right? Uh, right many of the students are doing their master level research uh, right. on the topic like sentiment analysis is there cryptocurrency social media analytics and uh, life satisfaction in social media there so many beautiful topics are being uh, sometimes picked with the student so uh, is it possible that we have some kind of sessions with them uh, to discuss the research problems to make the research problem contemporary so that we can target some good journals definitely uh, so first of all i would like to suggest that uh, uh, maybe the faculty members uh, uh, yes, yes. they can write to me individually and they can discuss okay we are we would like to research on this particular uh, yes, area yes. if we have a mutual domain so certainly students can collect the data and we can help the student to publish also. right 
right right right definitely right. i will i will suggest my faculty then and, and a bright student as well uh, whatever they are taking good topic and they have good potential so under the supervision of you and uh, one or two faculty member uh, they can start working yes certainly and we can explore certain markets which are not being explored you know right, uh, maybe right. from asia pacific region uh, yes, although yes. Uh, uh, although editors have this reservation that they always talk about the generalizability of the findings yes yes of course of course no no, no from, yes yeah. no generally yeah, yeah. publish a paper uh, in a context of only one country one definitely country. Yes, yes yes so uh, okay. i'm yeah. we can collect a multi country data and then multi country data yes and that is that is a objective of research you know collaborative team uh, take some responsibility and uh, all all those people work independently then uh, lastly we they integrate to each other this is the mean of research exactly yeah exactly. so once again thank you very much dr pratik for joining us uh, we are really uh, obliged that you uh, delivered this wonderful session and also the post session uh, discussion also was very fruitful thank you so much i'm glad thank you very much take care thank take okay care. thank you yeah. everyone audience uh, see you next time in the next webinar till then stay safe stay home stay happy thank you